Hey all, my name is Kurt and this is Trenton. Welcome to SLB Basement Bourbon Bar. I got another super fun show for you. I don't even know what we're doing. He just tells me to come <laughs> back here, puts five glasses on the top. I don't know. Well, this is something I haven't done either, so I don't want to do it by myself. Okay, so I don't feel as nervous then. No. No, we're all going we're going into this blind, both of us. This is not a blind tasting test or anything like that. What I wanted to do and then I'll ask you this question. I'll start by that. Have you ever, at your house, in the bar, have ever played around with your own personal blends of bourbons, putting them together and seeing what they taste like? No. I've heard of a lot of people doing that, but I haven't personally experimented with any of those. I don't want to. I don't want to waste my stuff. <laughs> yeah. if I, I'm not. I mean, I, I'm not a. I'm not a master well, blender. I haven't either. I haven't either. I, I have one home blend that I do here that we'll get to eventually. Okay. But I wanted to get into this subject because all the time, Trenton, in comments, I read from folks, from you folks out there, try this. Uh, one part of this and one part of that. It's fabulous. Try this. Try that. This is what I do. This is my personal blend, and it's great. Try it. it smells good. And I have to be honest, I haven't yet. But it's very intriguing to me. Extremely intriguing. Okay? So... What I did is I collected, um, basically off the internet, several of the most popular blends that are out there, you know, right now. So they have what they call poor man's pappy, prudent pappy, oh, okay. uh, poor man's four grain, old bird bourbon, wild turkey. I've heard of the the uh, old or poor man's pappy, but I haven't heard of the what is it? Rare blue bird, red bird, <laughs> <laughs> old bird blue bird. Bluebin. <laughs> old bird bluebin. <laughs> no, that wasn't it. Old bird. <laughs> babe, babe. Old bird. <laughs> Are we going to cut this? Probably no, not. No, nope. we're not. No, we're not. No, nope. he's. Old yeah. bird bourbon. I wouldn't know what I'm doing if I'm cutting it or not, so I got to trust you. <laughs> old bird bourbon. Correct. Okay. So. These are just popular that are online. So here's here's kind of what I wanted to do. I didn't tell you this either. I don't tell you quite a bit once no, in a while. No, you don't. Though. No, sometimes I don't. But I, I'm very interested into uh, you folks out there. You can how, you can get with us either in the comments or you can email us at slbdrinks at gmail.com or you can get a hold of me personally. Trenton answers the email. You can get a hold of me personally at either Facebook or Instagram. I want I want to know your personal home blends. Not these ones we're going to go over now. Not the popular stuff. What your personal home blends are. And who knows, Trent? We may just have a blind competition. That'd be fun. I don't know. We may or may not. But it, it sounds like a lot of fun. But I'd like to know what yours is. So if you have one that you're real confident in, let us know what that is. So, Trent, all we're going to do today is we're going to taste these. That's it. We're not blinding them or anything else. I've never tasted them. I know you haven't now. I have not either. No. I didn't know if you did or not. So the very first one on your right is going to be the poor man's pappy. And that is? The poor man's pappy is two parts of Weller 12 and three parts of uh, uh, Weller Antique 107. Okay. So what I did is I poured them in quarter ounce increments so that we can get the two and three to be easy yeah. for me to figure out. So. That's what you have. Two parts well of 12, three parts well or antique. And this is supposed to taste like Pappy. And this is supposed to taste similar to Pappy Van Winkle. This is the poor man's Pappy, which is what we are. We're the poor. So I don't want to screw you up here, but is this like the 15 year, the 20 year, the 10 year? <laughs> you know what? And I wouldn't know because I've never had any of Okay. The only one I've had is the one you have, and that's basically just the, it's not really the Pappy. So I have the old Rip Van Winkle at home, and honestly, like this smells like green apple, like kind of like the old Rip does. Yeah, it is green apple. You're right about that. It's like a green apple green. Jolly Rancher, man. It is, but it's kind of like a green apple covered in like a like a toffee. That's good. That does smell pretty good. Like a candy apple. Yes, good one, honey. Hmm. It's not too far off. I don't think. I haven't had my. It's your I bottle. I don't drink my ten year often just because it's. I sp I I waited a week in a parking lot to well, get it, so I don't drink. It I too like often. it. It is good. It is good. It is very good. Don't get me wrong. I like it. 
I have to say though, in my recollection of tasting your bottle, I don't think it quite comes to, I don't think it quite measures up. The flavor profile is pretty decent, but the, the proof the, isn't there. The proof of the viscosity is definitely not there. No. But you know, the flavor is pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. All right, let's move it on down the line. The next one is Prudent Pappy. What does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> but that's what it said online. Prudent Pappy, and it's another one supposed to taste like Pappy, but it's cool because you know you know how I like Maker's Mark cast strength. Yeah. I dig it. So it's two part Maker's Mark cast strength, one part larceny. Not barrel proof, just the, the basic larceny. That's good because I feel like with this one, you still have to get two kind of pretty hard to find wellers in order to make this. True. With this one, larceny True. Maker's Mark cast strength. I mean, True. I, I know it varies by area, but for us, we can find those pretty much everywhere. Exactly right. There's a hair on the bottom of this one. Ooh, I like this in the nose for sure. Sorry about the hair. <laughs> I must not have been wearing my glasses when I pour it. <laughs> huh. Mm. That's good. I like that. I like that they well, use I a like cast. That a lot. I like that they use a cast strength because it really mm -hmm. amps up that mm -hmm. amps up yeah. that viscosity. I think. Right. Uh, for me personally, yeah. Trent, I prefer this prudent pappy. Yes. Over the uh, the other pappy. And it's easier to make. Poor man's pappy. And yeah, and it's and it's readily accessible. Yeah, that's nice. I to like get that. The components of this blend. I liked it a lot, to tell you the truth. I'm going to have another sip. That was that good. Good for you. <laughs> All right, the next one we're going to try is the Poor Man Four Green, which I'm assuming they're trying to mock or try to duplicate E.H. Taylor's Four Green. Have you ever had? <laughs> yep. What? No, I've never had a Four Green. I've seen Absolutely it. At, I've seen it at lot. bars and stuff, but they're like 200 bucks for a one ounce pour, and I'm just I'm not going to pay that. Negative. So. It's not going to happen. No, and I never have either. But I will question. say we do have the Old Elk Four Green. And that was really good. I don't know how they compare, mm -hmm. but because what a four grain has higher barley content. No, it has an additional grain to it. So a four grain has as more than likely has wheat added with the barley and the rye. Oh, okay. And the corn. Oh, okay. But it can be any other. Okay. Grain as well. Ooh. Now this is two parts Weller Special Reserve, which is another bottle that's eh, kind of could be hard to find, and one part Old Granddad 114. So you're going to get that proof point. Yeah. With that Old Granddad. That's been harder to find too now though. The 114. It's back around. Is I it? Saw, okay. I, I've okay. seen it the last couple days. It comes and goes. You're right though. It comes and goes. So I apologize. Am I number three? Yep. That's. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is. This smells incredible. This is really, really nice. Okay, wait, I think I like this better than this one. So far, number one's my least Ooh. favorite, for sure. The smell on number one's great, but the, the, it doesn't transfer to the palate as much, yeah. but this. I'm talking about palate so far. Wow. Smells great. That tastes like a four grain. Really and this does. is what, this is what? Uh, it really does. Weller Special Reserve and what else? Old Granddad 114. Wow. So two parts Weller Special Reserve, one part Old Granddad 114, and it does. I have to tell you this, though, I don't, I don't prefer it more than the Prudent Pappy myself. It's definitely got a unique taste profile, does it not? I'm kind of digging this one a little more. <laughs> and of course you would. <laughs> got to be, you got to go against the old man. I love Maker's Mark cast drink too, though. So that might be part of it. Yeah. All right, now here it's good. It is. It is good. They're, They're all good. They all been good so far. Yeah. Now here, here's something cool, because you know I like wild turkey, right? That's it's my. I bag. didn't know that. Oh, you no, know, I've kind of thought I made it clear, but yeah, I do. So this one here is called Old Bird Bourbon, right? Honey? And it's two parts Russell's Reserve Ten Year and one part Rare Breed. So the proof comes in the rare breed there too as well. So that's what's in old man, old bird bourbon. Let's try. It. All right. Let's figure it out. You're more of a wild turkey fan than I am, but I don't oh, hate yeah. a good Russell's tenure. No, it's good. Wow. Nose is pretty much wild turkey though. That's wild. I get a lot of caramel from that nose. <laughs> yeah, it's it's heavy duty wild Tarmel. turkey on the nose. It's uh -huh. great. Caramel, good one. All right, buddy, let's taste it. Mm. 
That that's just screams wild turkey. Up. It does. Oh, right. It just he's right. He's one hundred percent right. It hollers out wild turkey. Wow, that's that kind really of good. amplifies a little wild turkey there. Um, we've had a few really nice pours of that. You know more about stuff than I do, but that two thousand two or two thousand three wild. Oh turkey yeah, thing. we had the yeah the two thousand two Russell's Reserve, and then we also had the nineteen ninety one wild turkey. Uh, cheesy gold foil release. Those were incredible, but honestly, like, yeah, that you can't. This go doesn't with this. quite get to that level. No. You know, let, let's be honest about that. But this is really cool. Yeah, this kind of gives you wild turkey, turkey, and amplifies it. Pretty cool, man. Really. I like that a lot. Honestly, I'm not. I don't want to say I don't like wild turkey, but yeah, it's not. It's not the first thing I'll grab when I'm going for a pour or something. Hey, fair enough. I would gladly make this as like a. Mm -hmm. uh, a weekly night kind of poor yeah. thing. It's that it, good. It's something you have on the shelf. Yeah. So that's nice too. All right. Last but not but not least, something you probably won't like, Trent. I'm just going to tell you that straight out. But, that's a but, scotch. But that, <laughs> that's okay. This is the only blend I do at home, and and I did it for a specific purpose. I bought this bottle at the Vine and Table, honey, when we were down in uh, Carmel, and you know through there. And I had a taste of it there in fantastic flavors for me. I love this bottle, Highland Park Cask of the Sea, but it's it's up there in proof. It's like, um, you know, I can't see that. Why can't I see that? So it's 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 like 127 proof. Yeah. So it's up there. And as I've spoke in other videos, I, I don't prefer drinking any single malt or scotch over ice. I just don't. So what I did is I poured one part of this cask of the sea special release here from Highland Park and I combined it with one part of Highland Park 12. So when I when I enjoy a pour of this in the evening, I usually pour one ounce of one and one ounce of the other. Now for what we have here it's just half ounce and half ounce. But single malt. Okay. Yep. It's all single malt stuff. And, and and that way it tames the proof down for me. Uh, this proof is just a little high and a little bitey for me. Wonderful flavors. Really, really nice flavors, but just a little harsh for me personally. Oh, Lord I'm, have mercy. I'm taking one Lord for the team here because I'm not a single malt fan Lord at all. have mercy. This smells good, dude. This is fantastic. <laughs> I don't think this <laughs> smells good at all. I love it. I love this. Mm. <laughs> Bro, that's just fabulous, man. I wish I had your palate because I just don't <laughs> get it. I don't. Well, here's the funny part. It's honestly, I don't like single malts. I know you don't. It's not. I appreciate you trying it. It's not. It's really not bad. But I wouldn't. If you if you were to pour this for me, I'd be. I'd, I'd drink yeah. it. But I'm not gonna order this at a bar or, right. or whatever single malt wise. But and, and he's 100 percent correct. It's all about your individual palate. If you don't like single malt, you don't. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. I love it myself. The funny thing is, you drink coffee, right? I do drink coffee. You like often. coffee, right? You do not. I cannot stand coffee. I've drank it 15 ways to Sunday. I've tried sugar. I've tried cream. I've tried mixing it 100 different ways. My other son, Corey, he took me through, uh, oh, what's that famous coffee place? Starbucks? Yeah, that one. <laughs> I don't ever go. I don't know what it is. He ordered something that, that took him probably three minutes to get it out of his mouth. I don't do. I don't go that far, but I, I just get black coffee. But yeah. I'm not doing like he a, ordered something and three and four double shot this that and the other thing. He said, "Here, Dad, try this." And I was like, "I do." I almost spit, I almost spit it out the side window. I can, I can. Horrific. So that's just different. You know, you like coffee. I don't. You know, it, it's okay. It's you all, like single malt side though. That's all right. <laughs> it's all individual stuff. It's okay. We're here to have fun, enjoy the journey, and let's talk about whiskey. It doesn't matter if you like one thing or you don't. I appreciate you trying it. Mm. But this is my only home blend that I do at home. This is it. And only because this is a bit harsh for me. And this together is wonderful. Love that. So, I don't know. what What's your favorite of the group trend that we tried here tonight and we'll exclude my personal but because out of the group I like this one the best but that's just me because I've already had it so excluding my home blend what's your favorite I think f for me I like the the four grain I would go I think with one of the one of the pappies but I'm gonna exclude that because the whole point of I feel like of a blend is that 
you can't find Weller Antique, Weller 12, Weller, sure. and Weller Special Reserve. Yeah. So I think if I'm, and I'm fortunate enough to have all those bottles, so if, I, if I'm wanting something that mimics a bottle that on secondary goes for $2,000, I'm gonna have to go with the four grain. I yeah. think it's fantastic. I really like four grains, yeah. but that's just my kind of palette. I would recommend this to anybody, especially since it's the bottles that you need to make this are readily available and, and cheap for that matter, like 26 bucks for Larceny. And right. Yeah, and it's all great points, and I couldn't have said it any better. That's a fact. For me, <laughs> though, I like Prudent Pappy the best. Oh, really? I'm surprised yeah. you didn't go with the... What is it? <laughs> Old bird, bourbon. old bird bourbon, yeah. Old bird Durban. <laughs> it's very good. It's amplified wild turkey, but honestly, I, I love this prudent pappy. To tell you the truth. So this is Maker's Mark cast strength, and what else? Uh, old, let's see, prudent pappy and larceny, larceny. That's the one. So two parts Maker's Mark cast strength, one part larceny. They're all very good. I liked it. I liked it the best. So. I had a lot of fun doing this. We have never done this. Trent and I have never delved into blends, ever. So it was pretty. It was pretty neat, and I enjoyed doing it. What I want to convey to you: let us know what your home blend is. Sincerely, don't take one off the internet. Don't do that. But if you have one that you love, and I know you do because you've given me quite a few of them over the last 12 months, so let us know. If we get enough of them and, and we kind of like a grouping of them, we'll do a little bit of competition, see what we can do. Maybe That'd do a giveaway. Maybe do a giveaway. You never know. That's all we have for you today, boy. But I had a great time. I don't know. I mispronounced a couple words, but hey, that's okay. <laughs> that's par for the course for me. I had a great time. Appreciate all of you. Sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, I do. As always, we ask you to please drink responsibly. We'll see you next time right down here with all of us in the good old basement bourbon bar. See you later.